This is a training session brought to you by DS Exchange Learning Centre. My name is Ray Werlod. I presented this class a number of times and it is licensed from my company to the DS Exchange Learning Centre for distribution to you. Data Stage Basic is a programming language on which data stage itself was originally written and indeed in which a large part of data stage remains written. People say that the direction for data stage is the parallel engine and that is true. So why learn this language? There are a number of reasons. The first and possibly the biggest in the new parallel world is that this language is still there very much. It is still the language into which a job sequence compiles. So any expression that you use anywhere in a job sequence, a user variable, a parameter setting, an argument to a routine, any expression in a job sequence is using this language. If you have a routine activity in a job sequence, the routine that that calls is written in this language. Both parallel and server jobs support before, after, job, subroutines. Those are written in this language, yes, even for parallel jobs, because they are executed on a single node on the data stage server. If you use the transform a stage in a server job, again the expressions, the reference key expression, the stage variable initialization and derivation expressions, the constraint expressions, the output column derivation expressions, all of these are using data stage basic as the language. And if you have a lot of business rules, etc., written in Data Stage Basic, you have the capacity to use the basic transformer stage in a parallel job to leverage those business rules, at least in a transitional sense, until you can get them rewritten in the C language used behind the parallel transformer stage. And finally, of course, there are the legacy systems. You may have server jobs, batches, job control code, transform functions, transforms, before after subroutines, all of which need to be maintained at least for some time into the future. And guess what? They all use this language. On this page is a list of the 15 modules that will be covered in this training. In Introduction to the Language, we will be basically setting up the very few rules that exist. We'll talk about how we program in an environment where there are no data types. Module 2 is quite short and introduces the expression editor, a mechanism with which you can build expressions mainly without needing to touch the keyboard. Module 3 then examines in rather more detail the elements that are available for putting into the expressions when you are using the expression editor. Module 4 covers the various kinds of things that you can do with character strings with data stage basic expressions. A special kind of character string is a dynamic array, an array of an arbitrary number of elements of arbitrary size, but a very useful construct, a searchable construct, a part word searchable construct, and the means by which records are stored in data stage hashed files. 
dates and times are very, very important in ETL type processing. And so we have a module devoted almost completely to how we manipulate dates and times. And we show you some techniques like how to calculate intervals. Comparison and Boolean expressions, setting up the logic of how decision making is done in a flow of control. Everything to that point is concentrating on expressions that can be used almost anywhere. Down the right hand side of the list are areas that we can get into that may not be able to be done in expressions. An expression is a single line construct that allows us to generate a value. The things down the right hand side are typically multi-line constructs. So how do we create routines? What can we do when we are using the full-blown programming language? And we'll split that out into two particular kinds of routines. The first is a transform function which must return a value and is the kind of function invoked by a routine activity in a job sequence. We will look at before and after subroutines which are executed once rather than once per row and some of the kinds of things that it's appropriate to do with those. We will take a look at job control routines and the data stage API more generally a little later. Although these days more and more people are using job sequences to set up their job control, many legacy systems still have a lot of job control code, whether it be batch or handwritten job control code, that may need to be maintained. We'll spend some time reviewing troubleshooting techniques in routines and in code generally. We will review the data stage API, look at how it can be used to interact with job logs, with information about projects, jobs, stages, links, parameters and the like, and how the data stage API is the report generating, job running, job stopping set of functions that can be used from data stage basic. I mentioned in passing that there is also a C callable data stage API with exactly the same functions available. And then to round off the training, we will review the data stage basic SQL client interface, or BCI, which is a set of functions built into the language that allows it to mimic the ODBC API for communicating with databases.